Hi, I'm Jeff. Uh, I have a friend who's a hardware designer, and hardware design takes a, like the, the cycles, design cycles are really long, and so you want to be like, the software you design, you're writing for, this, for the hardware has to be alive a, a long time before the actual hardware is available. So you're simulating stuff all the time, and then like later on when the hardware actually arrives, you want to flip the switch so that you can uh, get the, like the real software running on it. And I looked at his code, which is just full of all of this if defs, and I said, two things, my friend. First of all, you need a strategy pattern. Secondly, I know this awesome thing, libtooling, and I just I can rewrite this for you magically with a tool. It's going to be great. And this is the story of that effort. So there's a concrete example you, uh, you, that uh, I used to, to motivate this. And um, if you have two different kinds of strings maybe you want to use in code, you want to support either one of them, and you want there to be like a little um, directive or, or macro defined to tell you which one to use. Uh, for example, you might might be working with people who like Qt and they want to use QString. QString, if you want to convert QStrings to uppercase, there's a member function. But if you wanted to use std string instead, you might have to use an algorithm or something like that. So we want to take this out and make it a little prettier by having, first of all, um, a templated class where you decide uh, at some point whether you want to use QString or you want to use std string. And you specialize based on some sort of global Boolean that tells you which one you want. So you could, you could do the base template could be QString and the specialization could be using std string. Um, and here you might use it like this, set the global boolean at the beginning and then later on just access the type defs and the, and the methods. So Klein can help us with this. So first of all, when I'm trying to recognize the conditional regions in the source code, there's um, some callbacks you can register with the preprocessor, which will tell you, for example, once you hit an if def, you can look and see, well, is this the macro that I was interested in or not? And then you can record the location that that if def was at. And then later on, when you encounter a matching end if, you can see, well, is it the right one or not? And you can store that as a source range. So you can go back later and maybe try to match against those source ranges. There isn't a built-in AST matcher like that yet, um, but you could define one. So here's a custom AST matcher that will go and take a source range and identify any AST node that's in that source range. So we just start, we, we supply a source range and then we just perform the check, works like that. Finally, I had this sort of hack in mind where if I wanted to know the variables being used inside the code, what I could do is um, actually rewrite the code by by putting a, a lambda capture around the statements of interest that were in the conditional region. And then uh, once I parse it again, then I can ask the AST for the capture list of the lambda. And then I can get the names and types of all the variables used inside. And then I can set up my, uh, my methods. So I, I've got those tools, but um, putting them together was a little bit of a problem because um, in the official API, you can get control at the beginning of the, of the refactoring tool run, uh, and that's when I can set up those PP callbacks. I can get control at the end to sort of like figure out uh, what I found along the way. But I don't have a, uh, an access point where after the preprocessor runs and before the matchers run, where I can go set up all the matchers, which were based on what I found during preprocessing. And then I found this. Plainly, I'm not supposed to use this. But uh, it just happens to be exactly right. It goes in right at the point, point that I need it. I can, I can take everything I learned from the preprocessor and set up matchers. So that's what I did. Um, so it, it all worked. Um, but I have some suggestions for how, um, how Klein can better support dealing with conditionals. Um, one is to make that, that hook I noted more official. Secondly, um, we can incorporate conditions into the AST. Um, you could do that either by a, cus a custom attribute, but it only supports one, one set of conditions. Or you could introduce a new AST node which is conditional. Um, it doesn't always work, um, but it might look something like this. We can add that conditional node and then we can add a special view, ideally programmable, so you can say, assuming these symbols are defined, these macros are defined, then give a view that can be used by existing tools. I think uh, understanding these conditionals is gonna be really important for uh, for refactoring tools, because there's a lot of legacy code that uses it. I think it's important. I hope other people are interested too, and uh, please seek me out. Thank you.